The layoffs in technology just keep coming. The latest, Google cutting hundreds of jobs in its engineering product and hardware divisions. Deirdre Bosa has that story in today's Tech Check. D. morning. Hey, Carl. Good morning. So, yes, the layoffs keep coming, but the narrative around them is changing. Cuts over the last few years, they have been about rebalancing workforces after pandemic overhiring. But the new wave may be more about directing or allocating resources toward a new generative AI computing shift. And it could also be the beginnings of a massive labor shift enabled by AI itself. Look at where the latest cuts happened. At Amazon, it was Prime Video and MGM Studios. At Google, it's the hardware division that makes Pixel smartphones and Fitbit watches, as well as in its core engineering unit and the team working on its AI assistant. If generative AI is a full platform shift that affects every part of its business, more projects may grow out of those ambitions and not exist separately. So Google Assistant, for example, could be seen as redundant. Just yesterday, OpenAI launched the GPT Store. It's a marketplace for personalized AI apps. Essentially, it's Apple App Store moment, adding more urgency. And do tune into our Tech Check podcast where we will discuss this and more of how it relates to big tech and the AI drive. Jeff Richards at VC firm GGV, he argues that recent tech layoffs are also part of a broader labor shift that is just getting underway. He says that the 22-23 get fit trend dovetailed right into the 2023-2025 AI adoption trend, driving a massive upside in productivity. So essentially, companies, they learned that they could do more with less, and then along comes AI further enabling or even supercharging that drive. Mark Zuckerberg, who led the year of efficiency, he has said as much and over the last few years reduced Meta's engineering hiring targets, and he could have just been the first. Look at the hiring trajectory of Amazon and Google. In the second quarter of 2022, Amazon's workforce was growing at a 14% year-over-year rate. Over the last four consecutive quarters, the workforce has gone the other way. It has shrunk. Here's Google's headcount. In both cases, they peaked in 2022, 2023. AI may make it so that we never get back to those levels, a new era of efficiency that could stick around. This is good for tech investors, of course, those that are long, but it raises big questions for the economy at large that have been asked plenty over the last year. It moves, if this moves beyond tech, as many believe it will, and other industries get more efficiency, that is going to have an impact on hiring at large. And this may just be the beginning in tech. Yeah, that's sort of what we've been wondering is when yeah. this shows up in the in the macro data and in, in the macroeconomic conversations. And is the Fed paying? I mean, we know the Fed's paying attention, but they have a, there's a lot of research to be done. I'm, I've been asking heads of IMF, what do you? Because if it's going to have profound effects on productivity and economic growth and labor yeah. market, it's something we have to understand. When does that happen? I mean, and this is an indication that it's happening right now. We've had this conversation ever since we started talking about artificial intelligence before generative AI, but we didn't know when that inflection point would be happening. And this may be what we're actually seeing now, and it is showing up in the macro data. I mean, job numbers from last year showed that IT hiring is down by thousands. So, you know, it happens slowly and then all at once. And when we talk about these layoffs at Alphabet, at Amazon to start the year, they could be part of this broader trend that AI is enabling. And like you said, Sarah, like, are we going to see this in other industries? You can imagine that we will, especially as, you know, we get more applications and generative AI products to make other workforces more efficient. Absolutely, Deirdre. We, we will be all over it. All, all of us at CNBC, I'm sure. Thank you. Deirdre Bosa.